The idea is simple, really. First, we design your project, and then we build it. The first part of any project is to set the deck elevation as well as lay out the holes and dig the footers. Once holes have been dug, you need to make sure there are no exterior hose bibs that will cause problems with the ledger. Once that has been achieved, you start to cut away the siding so that you can install the flashing. Once all siding has been cut away, you can begin to install flashing in the areas where the siding once was. Here you can see flashing being installed, the hose bib has been removed, there's PVC piping that's coming out that will be connected to a future hose bib. And here we have all of the copper flashing installed for the entire deck project. Once the project is flashed, we can begin to install our ledger board, which is attached to the house with nails and also with half-inch lags. Here is an up-close picture of how the piping runs through the pressure-treated ledger board. Once our ledger has been installed, we begin to set joists temporarily with different pieces of wood holding it at the elevation that we would like. Here are more joists. We typically temp three to four joists so that we can change the level of the deck as we need. We continue to do this until the entire deck is completely temporary framed. Once the deck has been temped in the air, we fine tune it with a level to make sure that everything is at the precise level that we would like. Once we have our level achieved, we begin to install the joists throughout the entire deck. Once all of the joists are installed, we check one more time for level and then we begin to install the 6x6 pressure treated columns. The most important part of installing the 6x6 columns is that they're level and directly underneath the beams. After all of the 6x6s have been installed, we do one final check of the level to make sure everything is perfect. Here you have a picture of all of the 6x6 pressure treated columns installed and ready to be backfilled. Once our deck is completely framed, we can begin to either deck the project or install walls for the porch. In this instance, we installed the walls for the porch first. Following local building codes, we connect all 4x4s to the deck below and to the beam above with Simpsons strong tie connectors. For a maintenance free screen porch, we install white vinyl post sleeves around the 4x4 pressure treated material. A 14 inch LVL is installed here to span more than 12 feet on the screen porch. The LVLs are temped up with 2x4 material to achieve a perfect level. Fiberglass screen is installed above the joists and beneath the decking to create an insect-free environment. Once the screen has been installed, we put the decking on top. We install the decking with color matching stainless steel screws on top of the fiberglass screen. Once all of the decking has been installed, we can continue with our posts and start to build the roof. Once all of the 4x4 posts have been installed and the white vinyl post sleeves have been installed, we begin to square the deck to make sure that the roof is completely square. Here you see the 2x8 beams being installed on top of the 4x4 pressure treated posts. Here you can see that the beams are completed and ready for the roof and that there is bracing materials keeping the entire project in square. Here we have the deck completely framed the decking installed, all 4x4 posts installed, with all of the beams ready for the roof. The first step in building the roof is to cut away the siding in the shape of the roof. Once all of the siding has been cut away from the house and the house is properly flashed, we begin to install the rafters. We continue installing rafters on either side of the main beam so that everything is supported correctly. Here we have the gable roof on the right side complete and ready for the plywood insulation. Once the rafters have been installed, we can put the plywood on top. We use a decorative T111 plywood to add for a nice aesthetic appeal on the inside. In this picture you'll see the shed roof on the left side is almost completely framed. Once 
the rafters have been installed and the decorative T111 plywood is installed, we install a half inch OSB on top so that the nails from the roofing do not protrude. Here is another picture of the plywood for the roof being installed. And here we have the entire roof completely framed and ready for the shingles to be installed. After the decking has been installed and while the roof is awaiting shingles, we begin to install the vinyl handrail system. We continue installing the vinyl handrail system around the entire project and leave openings where the future stairs will go. After the asphalt shingles have been installed on the roof, we begin to trim the beams and install the soffit that goes underneath of the eaves. Here you can see the soffit continuing around the roof of the project. Here you can see that the trim material on the soffit around the roof has been complete and we're beginning to trim the frame of the deck. In this picture you'll see that all of the fascia material on the deck has been completed. After the roof has been trimmed and the frame of the deck has been trimmed, we move on to the roof beam. After all of the trim has been installed, we begin to apply lattice underneath of the deck. Once the deck has been framed and trimmed, we begin to work on the patio. After the patio is laid out, we start to build our frames. Once all of the frames are up and we have a foundation for the patio, we begin to pour the concrete. We continue to pour the concrete throughout the entire patio inside the form. Once the concrete has been formed, we level everything off using a 2x4. Here you can see the concrete continued to be formed and leveled. We continue to pour and level the concrete until the actual height is achieved. Here the patio is almost completely poured. Once the entire patio has been poured and leveled, we go over it one last time to create a smooth surface. This is the first step in coloring the stamped concrete patio. First we apply a base color. We continue to apply the base color until the entire patio is completely covered. Once the patio has been poured, leveled, and the base color applied, we use the decorative concrete stamps to create the Dominican slate pattern. Here we continue to stamp the concrete patio. Here the stamp concrete process is nearing completion and you begin to see the pattern emerge. In this picture you'll notice rebar coming up through the patio. This will support the future sitting wall that will be installed. Once the stamp concrete process is complete, we go over the entire patio with a sealer that adds color and also protects it from the elements. Here we continue to seal the patio can tell a difference between the sealed portions and the unsealed portions. Here we have our decorative sitting wall ready for the flagstone top cap installation. This picture shows the completed patio along with the sitting wall and the flagstone installed on top. Once the entire patio process has been complete, we can go back to the screen porch and begin to install all of the screens. After the deck has been completed and the patio has been completed, and we have installed all of the screens, we go back and clean the project as well as sod the entire yard that might have been damaged during the building process. In addition to cleaning the project and siding the yard, we typically install mulch beds around the perimeter to add for a nice detail as well as future flower locations. In our finished product, we have a maintenance-free screen porch with a gable roof on the right side, a decorative patio around the perimeter, a sitting wall for extra entertaining space, and a nice clean sided yard. Mm -hmm.